Hey everyone, welcome to our kitchen in New York City. We are having a major snowstorm today. We're getting in between 6 and 12 inches of snow. It's windy, it's cold, and that makes it the perfect weather for some braised short ribs. We're going to have the oven on all day. It's going to warm the whole house up. The place is going to smell incredible. There's going to be people out in the hallway drooling as they walk by. Stick around for some braised short ribs, perfect for a wintry day like today. You're going to love this one. As with any recipe, the most important thing is to start with good, fresh ingredients. And just take a look at these ribs. Absolutely gorgeous. The meat is just bright red, and there's all that fat marbled throughout the ribs. Really good looking, and you can see here there's some silver skin on a couple of these. And that silver skin is not going to render when we cook, and it's very tough. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that off with a knife. The technique here is to run your blade between the silver skin and the meat as close as you can to that silver skin, removing as little of the meat as you possibly can. It's a little bit tricky, but it's definitely something that you have to do if you want the best ribs possible. Next, we're gonna season these with some good salt and some fresh ground black pepper. And then make sure you season all sides of the ribs, front, back, top, bottom, on the sides. We want these ribs to be just bursting with flavor on all sides. Next thing we're gonna do is set our stove to medium heat, add some olive oil to a pot or a Dutch oven, and wait for that to heat up for a few minutes, and then add our ribs. We're gonna place these into the pot so that they're not really touching. We wanna give them some room to cook. These four nice big ribs fit perfectly into this pot. And we're gonna brown these ribs on all sides. And while the ribs are browning, I'm gonna quickly chop up a mirepoix, which consists of onion, a couple of carrots, and two stalks of celery. Back here in our pot, I'm gonna make sure these ribs are getting brown on all sides. I'm gonna flip them around. And then maybe after about 10 minutes or so total cook time, these ribs are nice and brown on all sides and they're ready to come out of the pot. And we'll put them into a bowl while we cook our vegetables. And into the fat that is rendered off from the meat, we're gonna go ahead and add our mirepoix of onion, carrot, and celery. Stir that around a little bit. Add some salt, a little fresh ground black pepper, and I like these dry herb seasonings like Herbs de Provence, but you could use fresh, it's up to you. And we'll give that a stir. And just let this cook for a couple minutes. Next we're going to add in a few whole cloves of garlic that I peeled. A tablespoon of tomato paste. One tablespoon of whole grain mustard. And now it's time to add back in the meat and we're going to place these ribs right on top of those aromatic vegetables. And of course you don't want to leave any of those drippings in your bowl. We want all that flavor to go into the pot. Next we're going to add a little bit of soy sauce into the pot. You can just sprinkle that right onto the meat. Maybe two or three tablespoons full. And now we're going to add an entire bottle of good beer. You can use ale or stout. Today I'm using Founders Porter, and this is an excellent beer from Grand Rapids, Michigan, here in the United States. And this should add a really nice depth of flavor to these ribs. Now we're going to add in a touch more of that herb seasoning. 
and then we're going to add in an entire quart of beef broth. So you want the ribs almost completely submerged, but you still want some of that meat popping out the top. Then cover with a lid and place into your oven at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for right around three hours. Here we are now, three hours later. The whole apartment just smells so incredible right now. You have to make this recipe, it's so delicious. The whole place just smells so good. You're gonna absolutely love this dish. These ribs are ready to fall off the bone. And if you make this recipe, don't worry if the meat does fall off the bone because that happens sometimes. So I'm gonna get this meat out and cover it with tin foil so it stays nice and warm while we make our reduction sauce and mashed potatoes. This is gonna be good. Here we're gonna start with a pan in the sink and we'll place our colander in the pan. And then we're gonna strain all of this liquid. So essentially you wanna get all those vegetables out of the liquid. We don't need the vegetables anymore. We're gonna discard those and just use the liquid to make our reduction sauce. So we're gonna place that liquid back onto the stove and turn the burner on high to bring it to a boil. And as this reduces, over here, I'm gonna make some mashed potatoes. And I've made mashed potatoes in a number of different videos, so I'm gonna go ahead and just focus on showing you how to make this delicious reduction sauce. So here we are now. The sauce has been thickening up for about 20 minutes. The water is steaming out of the sauce and it's getting thicker. And so what you wanna start doing now is skimming some of the fat out of this sauce. What I like to do is tilt my pan up a little bit with one hand and then take a spoon in the other and just start skimming that fat as best you can right out of your sauce. And yeah, this part can be a little time consuming and tedious, but it's gonna be really worth your effort because it's gonna make your sauce so, so much better. And after a few minutes, I mean, just look at how much of that fat I've gotten out of our sauce. I mean, that's quite a bit and I could probably still take even more out, but Right now, I'm kind of hungry and I'm dying to try these ribs. So before I go ahead and plate this up, I want to show you what the sauce looks like. It's reduced, it's gotten a bit thicker, and all of those flavors have concentrated into this reduction. To plate this up, we're going to start by adding some mashed potatoes to a nice wide bowl. And then we're gonna place one of those nice big ribs right on top of those potatoes. And you gotta figure about one rib this size per person. Unless you're really hungry, then you might want two. These are gonna be good. And so just spoon that reduction sauce on top of the rib. Make sure there's enough for the potatoes as well. A little bit more for good measure. And we're gonna finish it off with just a little bit of fresh parsley on top for a little color, and fresh flavor. And how beautiful is that? Okay, so here we are with the braised short ribs, a labor of love. And now for the best part, the taste test. Look, you don't even really need a knife. Just look at that. Just tears right away. Beautiful, just so soft, so tender. Let's give this a try here. Oh, and it just pulls apart, I love it. Just use my fork, I don't even need the knife. A little bit of potatoes on there. Delicious. <laughs> Could it be anything else? Hmm. 
Man, that is incredible. Just the flavor of the short ribs. And that sauce, that just is incredible, that sauce. Mm. This is such a hearty meal. It is the perfect meal for winter time. Just absolutely delicious. The whole house, you, you should smell my apartment right now. It smells incredible. It's so, it's so tender. The potatoes are great. I mean, this really puts meat on your bones. It, this is definitely a hearty, warm meal, perfect for winter time. Like I said, we're having a snowstorm outside. This is just perfect, hits the spot. You know, if I was to recommend a wine with this, I would say a nice big Napa Cabernet Sauvignon would be just perfect with this. If you like short ribs, give this recipe a try. I promise you, you're gonna love it. If you like this video, leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that notification bell and You know leave a comment down below I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you make short ribs or what's your favorite thing to braise in the oven and of course Keep on cooking